Hello everyone, my name is Clara and I will be talking a bit about my master thesis entitled Quantum Solitonic Turbulence in Low-Dimensional Bose-Einstein Condensates. Let's break this down into smaller portions. First of all, the subject that I'll be studying, quantum turbulence. What is this? You've probably heard of its more famous counterpart, classical turbulence, or simply turbulence. Turbulence is a problem of difficult definition. It is, however, all around us. We may recognize it from the familiar chaotic whirls and twirls of fluids. For example, in the swirl of water in our bathtub, in the smoke wafting off a candle, and even in the air displaced by a dragonfly's wings. On all macroscopic scales throughout the universe, this phenomenon is ever-present and has been baffling the minds of scientists for at least 500 years. Now, what about quantum turbulence? Is it any different? The answer to this is yes, especially because matter tends to behave rather differently in quantum regimes, in ways that are more often than not counterintuitive for our classical minds. But let me not get ahead of myself. Before we go any further into it, let's ask the next obvious question. Why should anyone even care about quantum turbulence anyways? Well, I would offer three main arguments. First, for the academic challenge. Second, quantum technologies. They are one of the most vivid research topics in modern physics, and a better understanding of quantum turbulence could be the basis for the development of a new generation of quantum technologies. And third, there is hope that knowledge on quantum turbulence may shed some light in the phenomenon of classical turbulence in general. Now that we've motivated quantum turbulence, how can we study it? Well, my approach will consist on the description of the behavior of a type of quantum fluid called the Bose-Einstein condensate. And what exactly is a Bose-Einstein condensate, you may ask? Well, in short, it is a state of matter besides the well-known gases, liquids and solids. Elaborating on this, imagine you have a gas. As you may know, your gas contains highly energetic particles moving freely about without a care in the world. As you gradually cool it down, first to a liquid and finally to a solid, its constituting atoms lose energy, which is to say they slow down and come closer together until they end up forming orderly structures. This process is no recent news. What is noteworthy, however, is what happens when you keep cooling down your system to temperatures of near absolute zero. You see, in this regime, matter starts exhibiting quantum effects. The most staggering of these is wave-particle duality. Wave-particle duality is just a fancy term to say that particles do not always behave like particles, but that sometimes they also behave like waves. So basically, in these extremely cold systems, as the particles lose energy and slow down, they stop behaving as much like particles and start to behave more and more like waves. At a certain point, the atoms have so little energy that they all gather together and form a sort of blob in the lowest energy state. When this happens, the atoms are close enough together that their wave functions overlap and they form a single coherent wave. Putting this into simpler terms, we could describe this behavior as matter having an identity crisis. The particles in our little blob of matter seem to lose their sense of identity merging into a single collective and behaving as just one single body. This is a Bose-Einstein condensate. So, basically, these condensates are quite awesome, and they've been gaining some popularity recently precisely because they are a promising prototype system to explore quantum turbulence. To achieve this, one must take into account two things. First, the emergence of small quantum fluctuations in the condensates, known as phonons and second, the excitation of topological defects, which can be visualized as little dips appearing in my matter blobs. These density dips go by the name of dark solitons. Dark, because they represent localized depressions in the condensates, and solitons, because they are solitary waves, propagating alone while retaining their size, shape and speed. So summing it all up, in order to understand the features of quantum turbulence in my system, I will study a collective of dark solitons in Bose-Einstein condensates. These will be immersed in a turbulent sea of small-scale fluctuations, the phonons, with which they interact. In order to reach this goal, I will devise a minimal kinetic model for the statistical distribution of dark solitons, and I will also compare it to a small numerical simulation. 
The success in establishing this theoretical framework not only will contribute to the understanding of some of the mechanisms underlying turbulence, but may also take us one step closer to accessing and controlling some of them for applications in quantum technologies. I hope that now you may share in some of my enthusiasm regarding this matter and thank you for listening.